Empire and Louise Mensch. Louise Mensch, what's your sense? Is Jeremy Hunt safe? Absolutely. He made a very strong statement in the Commons today. Um, his special advisor has resigned. I think it's a mark of Jeremy's character that he defended his special advisor and said it was inadvertent. We heard today that the permanent secretary authorised Adam Smith to be the point of contact. Um, but the, the uh, contacts were too frequent and they were not of the sort that should happen in a quasi-judicial process. So that resignation had to come. Isn't the politics of this fairly brutal in that? Uh, Jeremy Hunt's special advisor has been offered up as some sort of sacrificial lamb to take the heat for Mr Hunt. No, I don't think so, and that's why Jeremy was very uh, firm in his statement to the House that he regards his special advisor as a man of complete integrity who made a mistake and therefore had to resign over it. But as late as last night, he was saying that he wouldn't have to go. It's only on reflection that it was felt that this was inappropriate and he would have to go. OK, Tom Watson, Adam Smith to blame, not Jeremy Hunt. Look, you know they're in trouble when the Tory whips wield the A-team out like Louise Mensch to defend uh, Jeremy Hunt. And does anyone in the country seriously believe that this little kid advisor, special advisor to a minister, went out of his way to collaborate with a massive media organisation like News International and he did it on his own without his minister knowing anything about it? There is a volume of evidence in text messages and emails that when journalism and parliamentary scrutiny have had their way, I think will show that the advisor breached the special advisor's code and therefore uh, the minister breached the ministerial code. Well, whatever, whatever the behaviour or otherwise of Adam Smith, the bottom line is Jeremy Hunt brought in independent regulators, which was against what the Murdoch Empire wanted. There's an age-old maxim in politics that you can delegate power but not responsibility. His own special advisor was texting James Murdoch's lobbyists to help collaborate with them to smooth through this deal. And whether Jeremy Hunt survives or not, the public will make their own judgment. And it will be a judgment on the Prime Minister if he keeps this minister in post. Okay, well, Louise Mench, that is a broader point. How damaging is the perception that senior ministers and the Prime Minister are far too close to the Murdochs? Well, I think you heard today from Rupert Murdoch's own testimony that this is something that has gone on with successive governments of successive colours. The public doesn't believe for a second that this government is any closer to the Murdochs than Gordon Brown was or that Tony Blair was, who's actually godfather to one of Rupert Murdoch's own children. That is a ludicrous point to make. And as for the ministerial code, of course, you're responsible for your spads. If it can be shown that Jeremy Hunt gave Adam Smith false guidance or false advice, then he has a case to answer. So far, there is nothing. And I find I find it interesting that Tom says when the evidence comes out we may find something. Well, that's all well and good. We haven't found something up to now and Jeremy Smith has behaved with perfect integrity. And Tom Watson, isn't that Labour's problem here in that your own track record is not glorious when it comes to the links with the Murdochs? Oh, Norman, everyone's got to hold their hands up for this. And uh, the one thing Louise is right about in this interview is that successive Prime Ministers allowed Rupert Murdoch to become too powerful, including Tony Blair and Gordon Brown and John Major and Margaret Thatcher. Everyone has to shoulder that responsibility. So but uh, the, forgive me for one. laughing, though. The idea, let's look at what's happened. This advisor, because Lord Leveson has forced him to reveal his private emails that were not revealed to Parliament and his private text messages, we found a, a government advisor to the Cabinet Minister responsible for this decision, helping collaborate to smooth through this deal. Well, if the Prime Minister wants to keep him in office, he can do that, but he will suffer a massive political price because of it. My guess is Jeremy Hunt won't be in work by the weekend. OK, Louise Mensch, I suppose the point is, whatever the rights and wrongs of this, whatever the past track record, David Cameron is in power now. He's the guy who takes the hit. And any way you cut it, he is damaged by this whole saga. No, I don't think he is. It's only under this government that we've seen a proper investigation of the hacking scandal and we've seen the Leveson inquiry set up by the Prime Minister. It is the Prime Minister who has shone the spotlight onto this, who's promoted open openness and who is actually doing something about it, something we never saw Labour do when they were in power. And at the end of the day, it is the Leveson inquiry on by which the Prime Minister will be judged. And it's a good inquiry. We already see it bearing fruit. OK, Louise Mench, Tom Watson, thanks. Uh so much. Uh, maybe the next stage in this whole saga will be when we get Jeremy Hunt, the Prime Minister, before Leveson, but that, I suspect, may be a few weeks off yet. Interesting uh, range of opinions there, Norman. Thank you very much. Thanks to your guests, too. Uh, Norman Smith, there for us. Uh